The Ghostbusters are back, and the tested team was back on set to embed in the production of Ghostbusters Frozen Empire in theaters now. Eve, I just witnessed something I thought was really, really cool, which is I, I stepped onto the set about half an hour ago and it felt like I was in somebody's house. And you came on the set and you looked around and you were like, it's been neatened up a little too much. And then I watched you walk around and just move a few things. So I'm curious if you can articulate that process. When you walk in, are you like putting yourself back into the Spangler peripatetic lifestyle in order to kind of set the mood? Yeah, I, absolutely. I just, I get so involved in how these people live, not only everything they touch, they eat, they kind of move about, but the whole vibe of their existence. And they, this family are not only eating pizzas at the at the kitchen counter, they're, they're melting copper and <laughs> in you like ghost proton ones. Yeah. And so everything has to be here and the textures. Well, and so tell me where we are in physical space in the Ghostbusters universe. We're in the firehouse. So we are in the Ghostbusters universe. We are in the firehouse in New York. Right. We are not on the ground. You call it the first floor. Yes. This, is, this has led to so many issues. <laughs> you can't, oh, of course. You're American and call it the first floor. We, we call the very bottom the ground floor, but now we're on the first floor, yep. which you call the second floor. So we've had to like, kind of tie You've sent people to do right. stuff and they've done it on the wrong oh, floor yeah, and vice versa. We have to write big chalk numbers <laughs> so, so everyone gets it. So we're on the next floor up from the street level in the Spangler's kitchen. Now in the design of the interior of this building, I know the in exterior is very famous in New York, but did you have the sort of free hand about designing the interior layout of how the building should work inside? So uh, in the New York, uh, in the film, yeah. the actual uh, firehouse, the exterior was filmed, the originals, the mm -hmm. 84, 89, the exteriors were filmed in, uh, in New York, but the in original interior is filmed in Los Angeles, which is twice as big. Oh, the exterior okay. So we've kind of messed about, but um, honestly, we've looked at every single frame. I've had it on a like a loop, so yeah. I've let, watched the film over and over again. And this is very iconic in terms of the relationship between the fire poles and everything. But I did put a new kitchen in. Oh, you did? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really curious about the way in which you created the spaces for living around here. And I'm, I'm curious about how long that process takes you. You start with some architectural drawings of the space, but then you, you put yourself into the Spanglers and you put yourself into that space, yeah? I suppose I'm really lucky. I grew up uh, designing theater from a very young age. So I, I'm very adept at telling a story with an object. And to me, that's the most important thing to have a shorthand to kind of, you look at one bit of a cooker, an air conditioning unit, yeah. you suddenly get a spirit of what this family are about. I mean, they're not clean. They yeah. kind of cleaned up a bit, but they're too busy fighting ghosts. And they need all this stuff about to kind of co constantly re regenerate their equipment. So it's re reassuring. It's not just mess and chaos. It's actually part of how they get done what they get done. They actually just live in a workshop yeah. and, and kind of squeeze their living areas within that workshop. Okay, there's this one other thing before we start walking around. I'm, I'm looking at this space and it it really feels like I'm within the weight of a building. And I'm curious, it, it's, putting up a set like this can't be just as simple as putting up flats. No. How, how do you eventually infuse those flats and the, the cheap plywood with the weight of a building into it? Oh, well, I'm really lucky. I have such an amazing construction department who I've worked with for 20 years now. Uh, but. We'll put up the plywood and then we definitely go over with plaster yeah. and then we call it fat paint in the UK because the paint's full of uh, texture and it doesn't... Cornstarch or yeah, other things, all thickeners. all sorts of stuff. And uh, it was really important in this set completely to make it feel very kind of weighty, like American architecture, I yeah. think, is really hefty. But um, if you notice in the middle of the ceiling, which I love, we, we've kind of paid homage to the fact that the whole place blew up. Well, I want to talk about this. Can we go look at the hole? Yeah, this the mended hole. The mended hole. I noticed it was here on the ceiling and then also here the tile on the yeah. floor has been replaced. Yes, yeah. we had such fun. Nobody noticed for ages. Really? <laughs> Only the art department were like, really got it. Yeah, we, oh, we, we put it in. Yeah, It's a perfect Easter, Easter. egg. <laughs> also, the, 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 the linoleum you found feels so authentic. Yes. Uh, well, we looked everywhere for this and we managed to find somewhere 
who have these really old tiles. And again, it gives it such reality. And uh, I, I also found all these tin tiles, which yeah. I only ever see in New York. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're one of and, my favorite uh, they're things. They're one of my favorite things. Now, when you're doing stuff like the, the, the balustrade there, are, are you balancing between what is relatively easy to replicate and trying to be super perfect to the earlier films? Super perfect. Super perfect. And uh, I, I, this one art director who's been the, a fan of Ghostbusters, I think since he was eight. <laughs> He's on everyone's yeah. Facebook. He follows everything. He goes everywhere. And he's just been like my guru. I'm going, can't we cheat here, Luke? And he's like, no, no <laughs> not really. We've got to do this properly. Um, the first room I walked in on this floor was, I, I'm assuming that's a, a Carrie Coons and yeah. Grouperman's bedroom. Correct. That Can we go in there? Yeah, you leave. Okay. There's so much about this that feels... Like we grabbed it at a thrift store. It's good enough to live in. Let's go. Yeah, then uh, we really liked it, and we saw some uh, paneling like this in. Yeah. Uh, I think it was the '84 version, and so we just put that in here and some texture. And you're literally right. We just thought, it, it, Kalia, they they wouldn't spend ages going around a really lovely furniture store looking for a nice bed. They just get the first thing. That was interesting. I think she's got a quite a good artistic temperament. Yeah. Are there key? Are there key elements in each room that you are looking towards that help set the scene? Or is it is it always the gestalt of, of all the objects? In the I room? think it's the smorgasbord completely in yeah. here. Because we're not really in here that much. And what I loved was just the view of that kind of pop of color and the personality the of that. Pink that back they, here. they actually do have to sleep somewhere. <laughs> so I really like that. And uh, she called, uh, Kylie seems to be doing a lot of laundry. So I was like, yeah. <laughs> She so you have laundry laundry well. <laughs> I like that you have the store display case yeah. full of clothes. Yeah, there's nowhere to put them, and we had to cheat. So that was a there was a corridor and a wardrobe that we slide in and out. Nice. Um, can we walk upstairs? Yeah. This is one of my favorite things is that we can actually walk upstairs. Okay, so this is the top floor. These are the kids' bedrooms. These are their kids' bedrooms. I'm curious, do you have kids? I have kids. I so have four. You have you you have four. So <laughs> well, you have dealt with all the different kinds of bedrooms there are. I have, and I'm incredibly uh, obsessively tidy as well. Oh, yeah. So this is kind of a real good. This is like a cathartic moment for me to experience mess. Oh sure. So this is this is Trevor's this room. This is Trevor's room, which I hope you can sort of smell. Right. <laughs> you really can. You're right. And uh, yeah, there's been uh, quite a lot of damage. In Some the, special effects yeah, have yeah, happened so in they, here. They, yeah, I really see something. For it. But so, yeah, you can smell boy sweat. But we really, here. yeah, good. You can smell boy sweat. And we really reveled in the fact that he was kind of a musician. He was coming yeah. to New York and he's getting into gigs and concerts. And this is, I love this kind of patina and the dirt. Where, this is where the slime from the attic. And there's a really good scene where he puts his finger through the ceiling and the slime dribbles down. Oh, amazing. I also love how, I mean, it really does feel like we're in some private little corner of the city here. Yeah, it's really like Tribeca, because I've only been to New York about four times briefly. Really? And this gives me my, the spirit I get. No, from it's nailing it. So this is Phoebe's room. Are there, are there rooms that you allow yourself to take more time with because they're really important to you? Well, Phoebe's story is so important in this yeah. and uh, her room particularly. I wanted to express her kind of transition from geeky school kid to someone who's a, like a real proper scientist. Yeah. So we, we kind of had these tables arranged in incredible detail. And we had this lovely little prop guy who's probably only about 19, but he was really scientific. He sat there for probably two days, like sticking little bits of tape. Oh. And that sort of thing really, really helps. Um, talk to me about this brick. I, 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 I rarely see brick in a set that feels this completely genuine. Ah, we all, I love my pla the plasterers on this are just amazing. So what we do is we go, rather than just make it up, yeah. we go to real old brick walls and pull rubber around. You really do. do. You take did a, a full mold, casting. Full casting. And then you take pictures of some textures yeah, you like yeah. and you lay in. But this, this to uh, us in uh, London is our bread and butter. We're very yeah. good at art yeah. brick. There's lots of reference <laughs> material here. <laughs> Um, that's right. Phoebe has two sort of coming of age tracks, yeah. both as a scientist and a young woman. That's at the same what I time. think. I just wanted to reflect both of them. It's not just about her kind of becoming a kind of a romantic being. It's also becoming the yeah. real brilliance of like her grandfather. When when 
So they're done filming on this set. They're going to take it away soon. Do you, oh do you always God. feel a little bit of... A little bit. I mean, part of me thinks, oh, my child, my baby. Yeah. But then there's an awful lot of fun to just think, put your eyes forward and ears back and move on to the next story. It's an amazing set. And like I said, when I first walked in, I felt like I was violating someone's personal space. <laughs> oh, good. Because that's so important to me to make it feel like people actually live here. Yeah. That is really, really important. I think that's what I try to do on every film. I'm always astounded at the level of detail. Tell me what these are. These are proton pack sketches. They're the original proton pack sketches that have obviously come up from, uh, from where they were before. And uh, we just thought it was really important to have them all here but kind of, I like the way we've played it down because it's there, but it, with they're moving on. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it's like I, there is no bottom to the reality of the objects no. on the set. No, and I'm really lucky. I, I'm very careful with my department to pick people up who don't just work on computers. So we're very much uh, kind of uh, able to still draft and draw and use a pencil. So right, right, we drew right. these ourselves. It is, um, it sounds like you give your team a lot of latitude to do what they do well. Yeah, I, I hope so. Well, they do, they keep yeah. coming back. And also <laughs> I, I'm really determined to bring people up through the system who just don't get stuck in one little department on a screen for 10 years. They can do a bit of drawing, come and do some dressing, run around. Kind they of, become well-rounded. They become, and understand that it's a holistic approach if you're a production designer or an art department or a set deck department. It's very holistic. You have to be able to think of everything from kind of where the wires are, the drawings are, what they're eating, yeah. what they're driving. We're trying to make we're trying to make the whole feel whole thing feel hot, like it's a real big summer in um, New York. So we have fans with ribbons right. to show things off. And yeah, it's a constant kind of trying to create a huge world. You, you've been doing this long enough. I'm curious if you've had some of your former assistants go on and be art directors and production designers of their own films. Yeah, I've had a couple, I but the, the biggest one is, yeah, um, did Cure for Wellness with Gore Verbinski and Grant, my brilliant, brilliant supervising art director. I was very sad to lose, but <laughs> very pleased for him that he yeah. is now a very good designer. It's like watching your children go yeah. off into the world. <laughs> Really, it's so thrilling to be like I was on the Afterlife set, and they had the same thing. Yeah, All of Egon's but... original drawings were sitting there in parchment. Well, they were so helpful. I mean, we've obviously had loads of information, and Ghost Corps as an operation is very thorough. So we've managed to, especially with the firehouse, get original drawings, and we haven't followed. I mean, we've obviously followed a lot of them, but they kind of change per production. And so um, we were lucky enough to get out to New York and measure every brick and every bit of window and <laughs> just make sure we got it really right. Oh, that but we'll of, pass it on now. That level of, of obsessiveness makes me very happy. Oh, good. Yes, that's me. <laughs> Even like grout collar, everything. Really? Yeah, yeah. Obsessive. <sighs> You have like you end up with binders full of notes on every last. So much time. we have so many books and stuff, and even just graphics probably has boxes and boxes. Yeah, and that will also be part of the history for the next for film. the next people to take up the baton. Amazing. Yeah.